anything if you can look back over your life and God and brought you from point A to point B you ought to be willing to stand on your feet and give God some praise today if you're grateful about anything if you're grateful about opening your eyes this morning and seeing another wonderful day you ought to be willing to give God some praise today if you're grateful for the mobility of your limbs wave your hand in the air and just tell God thank you for the mobility Father God thank you for carrying me Father God, I'm grateful, Father God, from where you brought me from to where you got me and to where you're leading me, Father God. May we all please stand for prayer. May we bow our heads. Father God, it's me once again. Father God, coming to you as humble as I know how. Father God, I just want to say thank you this morning. Father God, if I don't ask for anything else, Father God, I owe you a thank you this morning. Despite everything that's going on in life, Father God, Father God, you still hold me so close. Father God, for that I owe you a thank you. I just want to say thank you this morning. <laughs> Father God, I've come so far. Father God, I know it's all because of you, not because of me. <laughs> Father, I just want to say thank you for being who you are for me. Father God, we need you now, Father. All over this world, Father God. Father God, right outside of these four walls, Father God, Father God, is someone that needs guidance, Father God. Father God, show them that you're God and God all by yourself. Father God, is a young man somewhere that needs you, Father God. Father God, turn his life around, Father God. Father God, we still need you in the hospital. Father God, someone laying in their bed aching with pain, Father God. Father God, we ask that you step in right now and relieve them of their pain. Father God, I just want to say thank you this morning. Father God, thank you for stepping into my life and showing me that without you on my side, Father God, I'm nothing. Father God, I owe you a thank you. Father God, I ask you to make me a better doer of your word. Father God, make me a better husband, a better father, a better brother, a better uncle. Father God, just make me who you want me to be. Father God, we ask that you usher in your Holy Spirit on today. Father God, let it move in a mighty way through, these, through this place, Father God. Father God, we ask that you continue to crown our pastor here with wisdom and knowledge. Father God, continue to give him the direction for the church. Father God, be your hedges around him and his family so thick that no hurt, harm, and danger could come to them. 
Father God, it's in your darling son, Jesus' name. I ask and I pray. Amen. Amen. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. And if God has been good to you, can we give God some praise? That, that sounds okay, but I'm talking about God. If God woke you up this morning, started you on your way, fed you and clothed you for your entire... Y'all know who God is. Put breath in your body, gave you another chance, paid the price for you. Y'all know who God is. Is he an awesome God? Is he a wonderful God? Is he a marvelous God? Now, if he's done anything for you, for at least 10 seconds, can we just stand and praise God? If, he, now if he's done something for you, if he ain't done nothing for you, you can sit down. But if you know that you are who you are today because of who he is to you, can we just give God the best praise that we can? The Bible says if you don't do it, the rocks will cry out. And I don't want no rocks crying out for me. Amen, 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 amen. You may be seated even in the presence of our God. We are glad today to be in worship one more time. God has blessed us. We, we, don't, we don't got to go to church, but we, we get to go to church. I'm glad, glad to be here. I'm glad God blessed me with strength to be here one more time. Listen, if you have not already, Make someone sit next to you comfortable. Look at them and smile. Look, y'all paid enough of them teeth. Go ahead and show them. Let's look at them and smile and say, I'm glad to see you. Y'all, look, that's the wrong neighbor. They don't want to talk to you. Look at your other neighbor. Say, neighbor, I'm glad to see you this morning. Amen, amen, amen. Now, this is the best part. It's good to be seen. My daddy would say it's good to be seen and not be viewed. Amen. Especially, especially in the church, it's better to be seen and not be, be viewed. So we are glad on today. Listen, um, you all know, you all know that we've had some conversation here uh, recently about what we're doing as far as involvement in the community work here at the church. And I want to update you all on that so you'll know exactly where we are. We are re-engaging our community. We know that we want to be more uh, of a community church and more vital and vibrant in the community so that we can fulfill the call that God has for us. So we've been blessed to be on this same spot of ground for 125 years, and we want to be around 125 more years. But we want to look like the community. Amen. Y'all ain't saying nothing this morning. We want community members to be members of the church, but first of all, we want the community to be saved. So in reaching out and sharing the love and the gospel of Jesus Christ, we are going to do that in a number of ways. Last week, we talked about from the ser sermonic uh, point that we want to reach people by word, by deed, and by example. We want to give them the word of God. We want to speak to them. Then we want to give them the love of God through deeds. We want to show them that God loves them through our actions. And then we want to be an example to show what God looks like as redeemed believers. We want to live what we say we believe. Amen. So in word, deed, and example, we're going to do that. We are actually getting some, some resources together to tangibly engage the community. So when we meet and greet them, we'll be able to go out and do that with something in our hands, in our hearts, and in our minds to say and give to them, to invite them not just to worship, but to invite them with the love of Christ to be a member of the body of Christ. We want to show God's love in a tangible way. So we're going to be doing that in the upcoming weeks. And what you'll notice and note is it's not going to be something that we just doing one time. Is going to be what we'll be doing for the continuation of our living in this spot, being on this ground, and, and, and the tenure of my pastorate. Amen. So, on the fourth Sunday of this month, you all know we spoke the last few weeks ago. My security then found him a new. So, Reverend Quinn stole my security, y'all. Look, that's all right. He'll send him back, come with a price tag. He'll send him back. So, we talked about 
Family and Friends Sunday, which we will have this fourth Sunday, the Gospel Temple Missionary Baptist Church. Pastor Lee Ewan will be coming on the fourth Sunday this month during our morning service hour, and he'll be preaching that morning. Gospel Temple will sing as well. Immediately after service, we'll have food for Gospel Temple. I want to thank the, the, the kitchen staff, Ms. Francis, Ms. Blanchard, all those that have been helping y'all with that. Let's give them a hand, y'all. Let's give them a hand. Thank y'all for leading that effort. So next Sunday, we will feed we want Gospel Temple and our invited guests to eat first as we join with them. And then, don't miss this. Y'all thought I forgot about it, but I ain't nobody forgot. I hadn't forgot. On the fourth Sundays, it's our crosswalk Sunday. This is when we as a church are going to, in the community, going to walk those that are able. Walk to the Crosstown Concourse. And we will have a bus together, too. Yeah, we're going to walk. Those of us that can if you can't walk, guess what? We got a bus for you. We got a van. You can ride and make sure we are safe as we are walking. Amen. And if you get there, you see that you're too tired, you want to get back, you can't walk back, the van can bring you back to the church, and we can ensure that you are safe and you can get on your bus. We all going to do this together. Amen. Amen. So the question now is, what are we going to do at the concourse when we get down there? Whatever you do is what you do. We're going to have a good time. We're going to enjoy ourselves. We're going to enjoy each other. We're going to fellowship. Hopefully, we'll meet some people. But our intention of going down there is not to save the entire cross down concourse. We just want to fellowship and show people that we can enjoy each other and fellowship as Christians. If somebody happens to ask us, well, why are y'all down here? Why y'all? Who are y'all? Then we're going to tell them. But we want to just fellowship and walk and enjoy the love of Christ and each other. Amen. Amen. That's every fourth Sunday beginning on this fourth Sunday. That sound good to y'all? Amen, amen. That's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do. Excited about that. We got a lot of other things that are in the works that we're going to get done here at the church. And I'm just excited about what God is going to do through us in this community. Amen. amen. Y'all know I got to ask this question. Second week, our Bible reading journey. Second week. We got two weeks down. We got 18 more weeks to go. How was the Bible reading going for y'all? Y'all enjoying it? Just clap a hand, show of hands. Amen. Amen. Good, 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 good. We thank God for that. And it's been going well. We want to make sure that we continue to do that. We'll have more resources. Those of you all that want to join us, you still got time. I can forward you all the emails, and you can journey through the Bible with us as we read and discover God's word. Amen? Amen. That, that's most of the announcements I have for this point. If I'm missing anything, I'll be sure to include them before the end of our service today. I'm just glad to be here, y'all. Glad to be here. Glad to be here. So we'll be in the hands of our wonderful music ministry. Immediately following that, I will be back with the word for this morning. Amen. Give them a hand as they come. Come on, y'all. We ain't gonna keep you long. He got the trumpet out this morning, so we 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 we, we, we about to do this thing. <laughs>
Let us pray. Lord, we thank you because you are most certainly our everything. All that we have is because of you. Everything we are is because you've been so gracious and merciful unto us. So Lord, we pray on today that we acknowledge you in all things knowing that if it had not been for you on our side we know where we would be for we would be still sinking deep in sin and far from the peaceful shore but you loved us enough that even in our sin you redeemed us and saved us gave us hope for tomorrow joy and peace that is present in today Lord, meet us in these moments as we share your gospel. Let it help and not hurt. Build us up and not break us down. But help us to see you and see ourselves in your word. That when we leave this time together, we be better. Giving you the glory and it be for our good. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16. Join me if you will. If your Bible is still marked in Acts chapter 16, that means that you are not in our reading plan with us. Because <laughs> we were there last Sunday. We were in Genesis on our reading plan. Amen. Acts chapter 16. When you've gotten there, please stand for the reading of God's word as you are able. And if you got it, say, I got it. If you're still looking, say, hold on, Pastor. I hear pages turning, so I'm still going to hold. Amen. Acts chapter 16. I want to begin our reading at verse 11, and we'll conclude at verse 15. I'll be reading from the English Standard Version, and my Bible reads like this. It says, so setting sail from Troas, we made a direct voyage to Samothrace, and the following day to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia in a Roman colony. We remained in this city some days, and on the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate to the riverside, where we supposed there was a place of prayer. And we sat down and spoke to the women who had come together. One who heard us was a woman named Lydia from a city of Thyatira, a seller of purple goods, who was a worshiper of God. The Lord opened her heart to pay attention to what was said by Paul. And after, she was baptized in her whole household as well. She urged us, saying, if you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come to my house and stay. And she prevailed upon us. Amen. I want to use for a preaching subject this morning, minding God's business. Minding God's business. God's business. Minding God's business. This Bible reading that we, this text that we just read, as you all know from this past Sunday, this passage in Acts chapter 16 begins the building or the evangelizing and expansion and growth and development of the Philippian church. Yes, that same book that you have in your Bible entitled Philippians. That is a letter from Paul to the church at Philippi that is being established in what we've just read. We learned last week that there are three ways in which we see in the Acts chapter 16 that the gospel goes forth. We said it this morning, one by word, one by deed, and the other by example. But we must be grounded with the gospel and agile in our approach if we are going to bring the word of God to everyone else. Hear me, we must be grounded in the gospel. Gospel is not going to change. But we have to be agile in our approach. Our method can change, but the message stays the same in order for us to minister to the community. One method of sharing the gospel is what we've seen here. It's, it's the word. But I want us to consider this today as we see what's in Acts chapter 16, verses 11 through 15. I want us to consider this, that being successful in our business and being about God's business must go hand in hand. 
If we are achieve the goal, we are to achieve the goal of expanding the kingdom, we have to be about God's business as we are successful in our business. You ask what your business is, witnessing, evangelizing, growing the body of Christ is not just God's business, but God has called us to be about his business. You believe that we are Christians, right? Christians means Christ followers. We are to live our life as Christ did. When Jesus was growing up and he realized who he was, the Bible tells us in the Gospels that he stayed behind in the temple because he said, I must be about my father's business. In minding God's business, believe it or not, brothers and sisters, your business will be taken care of as well. All I'm trying to suggest to you this morning is that if you keep your mind stayed on him, he'll make things well for you. Studies suggest, brothers and sisters, that out of 25 people that are asked by any Christian to come to Christ, that you can expect one person to actually come. Shocking statistic, isn't it? Because we get upset when we ask five folks and they don't come. But studies suggest asking 25 people to come, you may get one. Witnessing to people that are already in church may not be true witnessing. Because the Bible suggests to us that expanding the body of Christ must be done to people that do not know who the Lord is. Can you imagine, brothers and sisters, what church and Christianity and our city and our community would look like if we were to reach 25 people that don't know who the Lord is? Y'all still shocked on the statistic this morning. But what I'm suggesting to us is that we cannot only talk to people that we are comfortable talking to, but if we are truly going to be about expanding the kingdom, we got to talk to people that we know don't know the Lord. Brothers and sisters, many people fall and they fail, fail at actually witnessing because they want to rob another church of a member and put that member at their church. When we get, we'll pass 50 people that don't know Christ going after somebody that does, and we say we've done our duty. You can recall our conversation from last week, right? Where we talked about how Paul is growing this community. Let me, let me backtrack and then I'll go forward. We'll, we'll move forward. We'll be out of here. Paul is unable to continue into Asia where he was previously successful. Paul and Silas and Timothy get to Macedonia where Paul has received a vision of a Macedonian man saying, come over and help us. As they get into Macedonia, they're now excited to spread the word. They arrive at Philippi and this leading city in Macedonia. And the first people they see in Macedonia is Lydia, who is a business owner and a bunch of women gathered by the river for the purpose of prayer. Philippi is an interesting place for them to meet, brothers and sisters, because it looks quite like Memphis. Can I show you how Philippi looks like Memphis? Philippi mirrors Memphis because Philippi is a leading city in the area. However, it's situated on the Via Ignatia, which is the road that connects Rome to the rest of the provinces. But it is not the capital city. It's a leading city, but not the capital city. It's, it's leading, but not the capital. The capital of Macedonia is not Philippi. It is actually Thessalonica. It's not the richest city. The richest city was actually Amphipolis. But it's a leading city and an important city and a city that is well known, but it's not the biggest city. The capital of Tennessee, I'm sorry to tell y'all, ain't Memphis. <laughs> the capital... It's not Memphis. The most wealthy city in Tennessee is not Memphis. But Memphis owns the culture. Memphis is very important. In fact, Memphis, the state of Tennessee would not be what it is if not for Memphis. Memphis is a, is, a, is a trade hub. We house FedEx. We are a city that is in a tri-state area in Arkansas, Mississippi, and Tennessee is connected. We're important, but we're not the capital. And brothers and sisters, I would suggest that just like we see uh, Philippi at this time, we can find ourselves in a similar spot. So brother, they come to Philippi and they remain in Philippi, the text says, for some days. But on the Sabbath day, on Saturday, they go outside the gate, stay with me, by the riverside to pray and they meet Lydia, women, they're playing. This place of prayer that we see them situated at 
in the text, it is a place that does not look like a church. I'll tell you what it looks like. Last week, there was a handsome young man that stood up here and told y'all <laughs> that in order for you to have a synagogue, you have to have 10 Jewish men in an area to culturally be able to have a synagogue. They did not have 10 Jewish men in the area. They only had women that were gathered there for the place and purpose of prayer. So these women build a structure in order for them to pray. Researchers tell us that the structure they built was quite possibly just a place that had walls and no roof. This is a place where they put it together because they were connected for the purpose of prayer. Now, that's interesting because as Paul and Timothy come, we know that they're called God-fearers. This means, brothers and sisters, that they are not coming to evangelize people that already know who Jesus is. They're coming not to witness the people that already have a relationship with Jesus, but they're coming to witness the people that know they need to have God in their life, so they're connected, but they don't have community. Can I show it to you? They have no structured and committed relationship to God, but they know they need God. They need an introduction to Christ to move from connection to community. I'll show it to you. There were not enough of them to have a synagogue and build that. But there were few in number and partially committed, but they still prayed. But later, don't miss this, later, brother and sister business owners, they become the wealthiest church that Paul has established because they are the only church in scripture that sends financial resources to support Paul on the rest of his missionary journeys. Stay with me. They are small in number, but Paul writes to them in Philippians, thanking them for sending him financial resources to support his journeys by spreading the gospel, but it's just a few women gathered by a river praying and they add a woman that is a slave in the next passage and they add a Roman soldier in the next passage what I'm trying to get you to understand is it does not take many it just takes the right people let me show y'all the business that is being minded in the text how do you move Reverend Quinn from being a connection of people barely able to build something with a roof on it to having enough resources to support somebody traveling for ministry. How do you go from not having a building with a roof to being able to support somebody else for growing a church in other areas of the world? How do you move from just a few people of limited resources to a person, a group of people that can support every ministry worldwide? How does it happen? I'll give you the way it happens. You're going to be mad at me when I say it. But it's true. It happens because of the gospel. I knew y'all wouldn't like it. It's not attractive enough for you. But you do remember what the gospel is, don't you? The gospel is us minding God's business. The gospel moves you from connection to community and is able to empower you to use what you have to do what God needs you to do. I'll show it to you. God, through the power of Jesus Christ, pulled fish out of fish. He fed 5,000 with two fish and five loaves of bread. That's in the gospel. Okay, y'all don't like that one. He fed a family of five in your house on one salary and a prayer. Okay, you don't like that one. He put children that you have through high school and he clothed them, put them through college when you were without a job at times. All that through prayer and the gospel. Y'all still ain't talking to me. He sustained you with less than you thought was necessary and needful and able because of the gospel. You didn't have anything but prayer and faith and he fed you better than some people with three and four jobs and it's all because of the gospel. The gospel moves me from just understanding why I'm here to knowing my purpose in this world. 
The gospel allows me to use my resources not just to sustain myself, but to bless somebody else. Y'all still ain't going to talk to me. The gospel has built many churches. The gospel has built many cities. The gospel has sent many people to school. The gospel has fed many houses. The gospel has fed many people. The gospel has blessed people to be educated that had limited resources because when you did not have, God's word told you that you still could. I, I know your, gospel, your, your, your job and your career and your business is, 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 is floating because of your sweat equity or your hard work and you really believe you're doing as well as you are because you're so smart and you got so much money and you drive nice cars. But there are people that have nicer cars than you. There are people that have more education than you. There are people that have more money than you that are not doing as well as you are. So it's only by the grace of God and the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ that you are doing as well as you are. Are, and that is because the word of God is still true. The gospel. That, that's too spiritual for us. I knew who I was talking to this morning. So I didn't just come in my pocket feel full of spiritual stuff because y'all are a practical congregation. So let me give you some practical information. God moves them from connection to community and in community, and they're able to do wonderful things with prayer and the gospel. So let's read the Bible and not just Read the Bible. The Bible tells us that Lydia is a God-fearer. That means that she does not have a total connection and commitment with God. She believes in God and fears God, but she is also under some other influences of cultures and belief systems that are, in, that are still a part of her worship experience. So she believes and fears God, but she is not sold out enough to be Jewish and become a God-believer solely. Because culturally, she cannot. She does not know Christ yet because Paul brings her Christ. But here it is. Although that is her reality, the Bible also tells us that she is a seller of purple cloth or goods. So this means that Lydia is a business owner. She's a woman who in this society is not really one that holds high status. But she's a woman with means because the Bible says not only does she sell purple goods, but she also has a household. This means that she was the leader of not only her business, but she had children and workers under her. So Lydia is a wealthy business owner. As a matter of fact, purple cloth is reserved in these times for people that have financial means. Can't just know anybody buy purple cloth. You had to be rich or have some money to buy some purple clothing because the dyes cost so much and it was such an interesting process. So Lydia has a business where she sells good clothes to rich people. And the last time I checked, I'm looking at some of y'all feet and some of y'all belts and clothes. You know that name brand stuff you wear in church and out of it, it ain't cheap. If it's real, it ain't cheap. So that means you know to be able to afford a certain kind of clothing or cl 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 a wear, uh, uh, attire that you got to have some money. So if she's selling it, she ain't broke. So if she owns this business that is doing well, this means, brothers and sisters, that Lydia has some financial means. Lydia is probably wealthy with wealthy clientele. It's safe to say that she is. And this means, y'all, if Lydia is a part of the body of Christ and she believes and she becomes baptized, who do y'all think she actually witnessed to when she started believing? Could it be that the church has financial resources? Because when Lydia got saved, she didn't just go save folks she thought didn't have anything, but she went and shared the gospel with people that had financial means. I think I snuck up on a point, Anthony. It may be that Lydia being saved and sharing the gospel with people that had financial means is the way in which they are able to support the ministry that Paul goes out and shares around the world because they have financial resources with just a few folks. Y'all ain't going to talk to me this morning. So, so really what I'm trying to tell you is maybe you and our brothers and sisters, maybe we've missed the mark of who we've been witnessing to. We, we don't witness 
to that person on our job that's our supervisor, although they're full of hell. And they need Jesus too, but, but we feel like they're all right because they got money. But, but this set text suggests to us that having money does not mean you have Jesus. Having money does not mean you have it all together. So maybe, brothers and sisters, we ought to start witnessing to people in our immediate areas that actually need Jesus, but we've neglected sharing. Can, can I tell you that, that your business needs to be your mission field? If you are a business owner, you need to let your waiting room be your worship space. You need to allow that, 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 that your place of business needs to be a podium and a pulpit for you to share the gospel in a, in a dynamic way. That you need to allow everyone that comes in to your business to know that God loves them through your presence and how you share the gospel of Christ through your example and your deed. You have to be about God's business because God will bless your business. Y'all ain't going to talk to me today. It's hard to have a blessed business when you aren't about God's business. I, I know, I know, I know, I know. It, it, it's rough. It's rough. It's rough. But, but do you make your parking lot at your job your pulpit? Do you pray for your coworkers or your neighbors? Do you tell them about the love of Christ? Do you share the gospel with them? Because God has blessed you to already be in connection with people that need to know the Lord. Okay. Y'all ain't feeling that. Rodney, check this out. The Bible says that Lydia is from Thyatira. Okay? Thyatira is a city in Asia. Thyatira is a city in Asia. Okay, Chris, last week we found out that Paul and Silas were trying to go to Asia but the Spirit of the Lord stopped them from going to Asia. And God's Spirit, the Spirit of Jesus, would not let them go into Asia because they wanted them to go to Macedonia and Philippi. So what we see here is that they wanted to go to Asia because there's something in Asia that is success for them. Don't miss this. Not only is there previous success in Asia, but we know that purple dyes originated in Asia. If Paul is trying to get some money to travel, he's possibly trying to go to Asia because he's successful in Asia and he knows he can convert some people in Asia to finance his ministry in Asia. But don't miss this. Paul wants to go to Asia for that, but he's not able because Jesus says, no, I can't let you go to Asia. I got work for you to do in Macedonia. So if Paul goes to Asia, he does not meet Lydia in Macedonia. But what God does is he said, I'm such a good God, don't miss it, I'm going to let you get what you want and what I need at the same time. I'm going to make you go to Macedonia and Philippi, but instead of you going to Asia, I'm going to bring Asia to you. <laughs> Y'all ain't going to talk to me this morning. And what I'm trying to suggest to you on today is that if you are really about God's business, he'll give you the desires of your heart. He'll bless you with things you want and things you need at the same time. I know you want a blessed family. I know you want a man, a husband, a wife, but if you are about God's business, he'll bless you personally and increase your household at the same time. I know you want financial resources, but the Bible is true. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. I know you want people to love you, but do you love God first? If you love him, you'll find love in places through the love of Christ that you never... So God allows him to not only have Asia come to him, but he allows him to fulfill two purposes with one business venture. What business is Paul about? I've said it before. He's minding God's business. Amen, amen. He's minding God's business. I'm almost done. Here it is. Y'all tired of me. Bible says that when they witnessed to Lydia... Bible says this, don't miss this. It says, and God opened her heart to pay attention to the gospel, and she was baptized, and her household was baptized. The reality of the gospel is that we share it, but God is the one who opens the heart. 
the heart in text at this time in scripture is not just believed to be that thing that pumps blood and regulates the blood flow through your body. No, they believe in these times that the heart is the center, the inner self, is the center of all humanity. It is where all thought and mindfulness comes from. They believe the heart is the center of all human understanding. So God opens her mind, her inner self, and her understanding to the gospel. And then what happens is she's baptized because she pays attention to the word. Now, don't miss this. God opens her heart after Paul opens his mouth. Which means if Paul does not open his mouth, God will not be able to open her heart to receive what Paul is saying. Brothers and sisters, we've been praying for a long time for God to save a whole lot of folks, but we ain't opened our mouth yet. God, save my neighborhood, but you ain't opened your mouth. God, save this community, but you haven't opened your mouth. God, save my coworkers and my family members and my children and my grandchildren and my sisters and my brothers. You are praying for God to open hearts, but you haven't opened your mouth. I want my brothers and sisters to be saved. I want my children to be saved. I want my nieces and nephews to be saved. God says, I'm waiting on you to open your mouth so I can open their hearts. Y'all don't like me today. Look at what happens, y'all. I'm done. When Paul opens his mouth, God opens their hearts. When you pay attention and you understand it will make you want to be baptized. Our prayer should not only be that God open hearts, but it should be that God would open our mouth. Notice, after Lydia is saved and she believes in God and she accepts Christ, the first people that she witnesses to is her family. Bible says she's baptized and her entire household is baptized. This means she brings the gospel first to her family. Can I give us some all and some ouch at the same time? If you're the only person from your house going to church on Sunday morning, if you're leaving folks in bed and behind on Sunday morning, but you're willing to witness to the world but not your own household, Maybe your efforts in the world are falling short because your efforts at house are not in line. But they ain't going to want to hear me. I ain't going to want to, God, well, let your mouth open so God can open some hearts. Because the reality is saving souls ain't you and I's business. That's Jesus' business. That's God's work. Our job is to share it, and God opens the heart. So if we are all leaving someone behind, you cannot make them come. But if you don't open your mouth, they may never come. Your first mission field is your family. Your first ministry is your family. And brothers and sisters, a sad indictment for us today is that this church would be filled if all of our family members in our house came to church. But it ain't about filling the church. Think about how your relationships with your brothers and sisters and cousins and nieces and mothers and fathers would be different if everybody was truly saved. Think about how your neighborhood would shift and change. Think about how your family reunions would be if everybody really was saved. We fall out over some nonsense that the word of God can bring us back together with. She saved a household. She saved a family because the gospel moved her. I want everybody to be saved. I want everybody to be saved. I, I, I'm, I'm fighting by doing this and not, but I, um, I feel the spirit leading me to do this. Uh, let me, let me, let me, let me, let y'all know this is out of the box for me. Um, Reverend Quinn's, come, 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 come here, stand, stand in front for me. Uh, Mario, come, 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 come here for me. Now, this, I, I, I saw uh, Pastor Elliot Shelton, he made an example during one of his sermons this past week. So this, this, this ain't mine. I saw this. And I'm, I'm borrowing this. I already reached out to him. Didn't know we are going to do this today. But, but let me just show y'all something. Um, 
Re Reverend Quinns and, and Mario, uh, I want to give y'all the gospel. Now, you go and just share with one other person and bring them back. Just go grab one other person and bring them back up front. One person. That's three people. I want to get one person. Y'all just come with me. There we go. There we go. What's the name, Brian? This is sharing the gospel. Bring it back one. They went and talked to 25 people, but they got one person, one person back. So, so now we, we doubled the number of people up here, right? We doubled the number of people up here. Just from them going and getting one person. Now, now, now y'all that they brought, I want, I want y'all and them to go get one more person. Anybody, anybody. You can get your brother too. That's, we got to start in the household. We gotta start out. He 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 can play later. We ain't, I ain't, I, ain't, I might not get to the day. There we go. See see he was reluctant. He reluctant, but 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 the salvation has has, has brought forth. Look, look at that. Look at that. There we go. There we go. Look young and old. That's a blessing. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Okay okay okay. Look now we started with three. How many we got now? And, and, and Graham just heard about what was going on. He didn't want to be left out. And he just, he just came too. Now, 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 last time, I, I want everybody here, y'all go get one more person, just one more person. One more person, one more person. Y'all get your mama, get your mama. Y'all, y'all, don't leave. It's the house. Look, y'all, uh, anybody, anybody, Damien, anybody. You can grab, you can grab my wife. Grab my wife. Look at that, look at that, look at that. Look at that, look at that, look at that. Look at that. My goodness, my goodness. The word of God spreads fast with just one person. Look at that, look at that, look at that. We got a mixture and a, look at look at this. And some people just come in because they don't want to be, they don't want to be left out. Look at that, look at that. So it, it, isn't it amazing how, how just sharing with one person can move? Now let me ask you this. Reverend Quinns and Mario, look at what you did. Because if you had never gone, they would have never come. But, but the first thing y'all had to do was go. So this is the question, brothers and sisters. If it works like this, this way, look at the community around us and how many people are connected because some people are going to see what's happening and want to come to Christ just because they see the movement of God taking place. So what we're looking at is the power of one witness bringing one other person. Y'all may have your seats. You, you can have your seats. You can have your seats. So the suggestion to us is that as we want to see the body of Christ grow, it cannot grow unless we go. It, it's amazing. I'm almost done. I'm, I'm done here. I'm leaving here. I'm leaving here. I'm leaving here. This, this is it. This is it. This is my last, my last thing. I'm, I'm done. This is the last thing, I promise you. I said it twice now. It's the third time. Third time is a charm. Y'all know I'm Baptist, so I got three of these. This is my third one. The Bible says that after her household was saved, Chris, it says that she asked them to stay with her in her house. The Bible says she prevailed on us. Let me read it to you. Verse, verse, verse 15. It says, and after she was baptized in her household as well, she urged us saying, if you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, if you know I'm saved, come to my house and stay and she prevailed upon us. Can I, can I tell y'all really what that means? Don't miss this. As Jews, they were not supposed to stay in her house. It is improper for them culturally to stay in her house as a Jew and a non-Jew. But the gospel does not just change who they are witnessing to. It changes them as they're witnessing to them. So the reason why Paul and Silas and Timothy and Luke stayed with her is because they saw that not only was she changed, but since they are all Christians and not just Jew and non-Jew, the same gospel that changed her changed them too. And they are now able to stay in community because the same God that did it for her is the same God that did it for you. Can I pull some Tremaine Hawkins in here and, and go ahead and close this thing? A wonderful change has come over me. He changed
changed my life complete. And now I sit, I sit at his feet to do what must be done. I work and work until he comes. A wonderful change has come over me. Can I tell you what changed my life? My life changed when I realized what he did for me. I realized that he died for me. I realized he gave his life. He paid a price he did not owe because I owed a price I could not pay. And when I realized what he did for me, I'm now willing to do anything for him. So I'll tell the world that I serve a savior that lives, loves, and will come again to receive us. Not only did he die, but he rose early on the third day with all power in his hand. He's given me power to tell 25 people with 24 no's. He's given me power to look beyond other people's faults because he looked beyond mine. He's given me power to see the love of God in people even when I may not see it in myself because I love him so much, I'll do anything for him. The gospel, minding God's business, will not only bless God, but it will bless your business as well. It'll change you as well. We can't get so caught up in changing the world that we forget that we need to be changed as well. Lord, the church is open. If you believe the Lord has changed you, you believe the Lord has sent you here today not just to hear, but to be united with the word of God. You can come. By letter count, for baptism, a Christian experience, you can come. If you want to be about God's business, if you want to expand the body of Christ, if you want to strengthen your witness, you can today by example. If you know the Lord and you believe in God, but you want your family, your brothers and sisters to be saved, before you can open your mouth, you have to have his word in your mouth. So I want to give you God's word this morning. We want to equip you with being able to bless those in your immediate surroundings. Won't you come? If you need a church home, you can come. If you need to be connected to Christ, you can come. Anybody know anything about that change? He washed away all my sins and he If you're already saved, but you're just looking for a church home somewhere that you can consistently come and be connected and be in community, we offer Christ to you. Won't you come?
Let's see that we have none there just the room. Amen. Can we praise God for this choir and these musicians? Amen. Praise God for such a wonderful change. If it had not been, if it had not been. Amen. Brothers and sisters, it's giving time. It's giving time. Amen. God loves a cheerful giver, and he's blessed us to be able to give back to him just a portion of that in which he's given to us. Listen, the Bible speaks of tithes and offerings, and this is a part of worship. We believe that offerings and tithes are a part of worship. Every time, biblically, that we see uh, someone going to worship, they always brought an offering, a sacrifice. So we ask today that as you prepare your offering, your tithes and your offerings, that you would pray to God and ask God what is right, and I guarantee you things will be in well order in your life and in your business as well. So we want to pray before we come. And if you need a tithing envelope, please raise your hands. Our wonderful ushers will certainly provide you with one. If you need to give electronically, you can give through Givelify. The information is on the screen. Eastern Star, Missionary Baptist Church, Memphis, Tennessee. If you're giving through Cash App, that is dollar sign the star, T-H-E star, 1334. Dollar sign the star, T-H-E star, 1334. Amen. Amen, amen. It's a blessing to be able to give. It's a blessing to be able to give. Your giving, your offerings, your resources are very important for us to do ministry in this community. As we make this push to re-engage our community, we invite you to partner with us, not just in your word and deed and example, but also in your finances so that we may be able to fulfill God's command for us in this world. Amen, amen. If we're prepared to give, all those to my left, and to my right, if you can please stand, and beginning in the rear of the church, please follow the direction of these wonderful ushers as you come. for all that you've done. We thank you for these gifts. We thank you for the offerings. We thank you for the tithes. We thank you, Lord, that you've given to us and we are graciously, thank you for us graciously and we are able to give back to you just a portion of that which you've given to us. Bless the giver as well as the gift. Let no one go without because of their obedience, but let all be blessed because their obedience unto you. Those that did not have, we pray they have it on the next occasion. Let these gifts be used for the purpose in which you've intended for your glory and for our good it is in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus we ask and we pray and every heart said together amen, amen and amen, amen, amen 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 announcements, announcements, announcements I do want to make sure, I don't know if we have, don't know if we have the graphic yet but on the fourth Sunday, again, it is, our, it is our Family and Friends Sunday. Fourth Sunday, Family and Friends. Also on fourth Sundays, it is our Youth and Young Adult Sunday. Hear me carefully. 
the children's church will be open for the four Sundays. We will add Sundays as we see fit going forward on four Sundays. The age limit for the children's church is six years old right now. Amen. So children up to six. Sister Chantel will have them upstairs with her for children's church. And Sunday school we have at 9 a.m. Remember, this is our on four Sundays. We have our Sunday school geared towards our youth. We'll have refreshments and snacks in between service for our youth. Our youth will sing and lead worship on the four Sundays. Amen. Youth and young adults. Y'all with me? Youth and young adults. Amen. All right. All right. We're we going to see if everybody clap for this one. Third Sunday is our men sing. See how quiet y'all get right there? See how quiet y'all get right there? Am I right? Amen. Amen. Men. Men. Third Sunday. This, this, this coming Sunday. Brothers. 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 Now, I'm not. Am I overstepping? We, we good? Okay. There we go. Brothers, now look, 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 look. Yeah, watch this. You remember that analogy with the illustration we just did? With everybody going to get one. Brothers, seriously. Y'all call a brother and say, hey, we, we got rehearsal. We, we singing this Sunday. Amen. We got a couple of brothers that are not here that are traveling. They'll be back this coming week. We need them in the choir stand. Amen. Amen. We need all cooling water soldiers. <laughs> Amen. All cooling water soldiers. Amen. We need all of y'all. Amen. Men, we're going to sing, all right? All right. Amen. 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 All right. That's this coming Sunday. Now, before we conclude, before we leave, before we get out of here, y'all, listen, listen, listen. I, we need you all to be engaged as we re-engage the community. Many of you live in this community. We need to know what community needs there are and where are gathering places for community members so that we can be in those spaces to connect with those individuals. We need you to be engaged. If this ministry and this church is going to be around for another, another 125 years, we need to support the community and have the community to support and own the church. Y'all with me? So we are going to engage, but we need your help. If you are serious about this effort, just pray with me and partner with me as we move forward to this end. Amen. Am I missing any announcements? All those born in the month of April, stand. Everybody born in April. April, April birthdays. Hey, there we go. There we go. April birthdays. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. And may God bless you with many, 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 many more. Amen. If you are sitting next to someone that you do not recognize or may be visiting today, I want you to show some love to them. Can we, can we show some love for our visitors today? We pray. Pray that you enjoyed yourself and that God met you in this place, that God has spoken to you and given you a word that will bless your life. On the 4th, excuse me, April 27th is the Layman's Banquet at 6 p.m. at Lake Grove Missionary Baptist Church. We'll be securing tickets for that and the table for that. So if we want, someone wants to go, let us know so we can make sure that you will be in the place with us. May 5th at 2 p.m. Ellis Grove Missionary Baptist Church. Number two praise fellowship choir concert. You do not want to miss it. Meet us there at 2 p.m. Sunday, May 5th. Amen. Am I missing something? My wife said I ain't missing nothing. So if I'm missing something, talk to her. Don't talk to me. Amen. If there be nothing else, let's stand for our benediction. Look at your neighbor and say, I love you. God loves you. And there's nothing you can do about it. Amen. Let's sing as we go.
special prayer will get you through. Prayer will change you for the circumstances and change the circumstances for you. Because sometimes you may be hurting. You might be hurting. falling and present you faultless for his presence with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty dominion and power both now and forever Pray for you. 